Students at Roseville High School have a unique opportunity to get up close with one of the world's largest and smelliest flowers. Do you want to get that close? Lori Wallace joins us live from the campus's greenhouse. OK, you said it's not blooming right now, <laughs> so it's not stinky yet. No, I am so glad I'm here as a preview. That's what I want to just say right out the gate. OK, this thing is six feet tall. It could still grow just a little bit before it blooms. And yeah, we're in the greenhouse here at uh, Roseville High School. A pretty unique opportunity here on campus. And I have CJ Addington with me, a physics teacher here on campus right now. You've been at this with this plant for nine years. Oh yeah, it's been a long process. Uh, this guy started out as a little tiny bulb about the size of a little potato oh, wow. about nine years ago. But we've been repotting it every year, watering it, taking care of it, keeping an eye on it. And now it's finally ready to do its big show and give us a flower. Okay, now what's really cool is he has this flower in different phases in the greenhouse right now. So if we can step around this way, show us kind of what it looks like when it starts, CJ, and then, and then how it gets to where it is. So this is a bud just coming up. So this one's going to be a new leaf emerging from the ground, from the giant underground bulb. And then this is what it looks like when it's in the leafy stage. So it's just photosynthesizing like any normal plant would be, making its uh, giant underground bulb. And once that gets to about 35 to 40 pounds, Sheesh. then it's ready to bloom. Okay, so the process of this thing blooming is really cool. You're holding a thermometer, so you actually take the temperature of this flower. Yes. Um, the night that this opens and blooms, it actually heats up to almost human body temperature to help spread the odor. And so I keep track of it with my thermometer so I can kind of tell if it's getting ready to close. Okay, can we see if this thing is, is getting close? Well, the base of it right now is right about 80 degrees. And the upper part up here is, ooh, ooh, it's about 86, 87. So the top part is warmer than the bottom part, which is an indication that it may be getting ready to do something. Okay, it well, can it wait like two minutes till I leave? Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll just watch it from outside <laughs> the door. So let's talk about the, the stench from this flower, because that's what everybody waits for. What causes the smell, and, and, and why does it end that way? Well, it is called a corpse flower, and the reason for that is that it's actually pollinated by beetles and flies instead of honeybees. So instead of making a nice floral sweet smell, it makes a smell like that of a dead body. Uh, and it's just giving off the chemicals that mimic uh, like rotten flesh. So on the night that it opens, it's going to smell really, really bad. Okay, it's weird that people would want to see that, but it is a really <laughs> rare thing. So you are opening this up for people to come see it and smell it, which this might be the first time you're really glad that you have a mask on so you won't catch as quite the smell that, that it lets off. What do people need to do to keep track of where the flower's at? So uh, we have an alert system going, which people can kind of follow. Um, actually, you want me to Yeah, grab one? it real quick so we yeah. get this right for you at home if you're interested in coming to check the flower out. So when the flower opens, we are going to open the campus and the greenhouse, and the public is welcome for free viewings. Um, if you want to text the word corpse flower to 52855, you'll get an automatic text alert. Uh, you can also go on Twitter and check our um, Twitter feed, which is RHS Tigers Info. Uh, and then as soon as we see that the flower is opening, we'll send out the word. And anyone who wants to come see it is welcome to. We're just going to ask that everybody wear a mask, stay with their group, and observe their social distancing. Yeah, it's a unique opportunity. We have to wrap it up. But this is rare for you to have it at a location like this. Oh, yeah. I mean, these are usually only at giant botanical gardens and nurseries and universities. And we're just a little urban high school. So the fact that we've bloomed these, I think, is quite an achievement for us. And we're very proud. Yeah, big pat on the back to you, too, for keeping this <laughs> thing going for nine years. So I have a great idea. Kay. We'll send Dave Grass off when it, when it blooms. <laughs> Yes. And then he can come <laughs> and he can give the follow up report. That's a I brilliant think that idea. Sounds perfect. Brilliant. Brilliant. Don't say we all. Don't say we all. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Lori. Sure, I'm glad we had the pancakes before that. Yeah. Because after I that know, description, right? I was like, I'm good. Woo! Corpse flowers. No joke.